What's up guys, so in today's video we're going to be picking up right where we left off at the engine build room at my work. Uh, so if you watched the last video you saw that we did a lot of work to restore the block including honing the cylinders, I also got it sent out to be decked, we put some freeze plugs in, repainted it, and a couple other things. But in today's video we're going to be focusing on the mechanical side of the engine rebuild, so let's get started. So first off, I just want to emphasize that anything I'm showing in this video is a part of the engine assembly process, but what that doesn't include is all of the cleaning and measurements that came before that. Now a perfect example of that would be the crank that I'm installing right now. Uh, before we got to this point, I probably spent two or three hours just cleaning and polishing everything, including taking some emery cloth to any of the journals, and then also taking measurements on any of the journals as well. But at this point you can see I'm installing all the main caps using some brand new ARP studs and some assembly lubricant. And once we got to the rear main cap we applied some silicone RTV just to make sure that we got a really good seal around that one. And then I just tapped it into place using a rubber mallet. And next we're going to be tightening down all the main caps and we're going to be working from outside to in. Next up, I'm going to be installing the stock pistons and rods, and an important point to note here, um, my power goal is around 350 to 400 horsepower, and from what I've read online, uh, that is about the limit of what you should do with the stock setup, but with the money I saved by reusing the internals, I was able to afford a cam upgrade, which was something that I really wanted to do for this setup. Now for anyone that was wondering, uh, I was using ACL bearings for both my main bearings and my rod bearings and some Hastings uh, piston rings. Now if you're curious about any of the parts that I'm going to be using throughout this process, I will put a list with links to each of them in the description. So after torquing everything down, I just rotated the crank to make sure that everything would rotate smoothly and I didn't feel any drag, which luckily that was the case, so I could move on to the next step, which was focusing on the head. And one part that I made sure not to skimp on was the head gasket. I'm going to be running around 15 pounds of boost, which is much higher than the stock 6 pounds and with a bigger turbo, so I went with a Kometic MLS gasket, and then I coated it with some Permatex copper spray gasket. Now for the head itself, I had it sent out to a machine shop to get it decked, and then I also got a valve job done. Now unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of the initial assembly of the head, so that would include the new valves, valve springs, retainers, and lash pads, and rockers that you see here. So essentially that all came as a match set from Snyder Cams who did my cam regrind. And then similar to the block, I'm using ARP head studs here. So at this point everything is really starting to come together. I have my new cam installed that has a stage 2 regrind from Snyder, and then my resurfaced rockers are just about ready to set the valve lash, so that's the next thing on the list.
So after setting my valve lash, the next thing on my list is to install my new timing chain and cam sprocket. Those components came in a kit from Cloy's. And then after that, we're gonna install some gaskets and finish everything off by putting on the timing cover. Now we're about ready to put on the valve cover, which I actually had sent out to get powder coated. Now, if you've ever seen valve covers where that raised lettering is actually machined down, I'd like to do something similar to that, but keeping with my black and gold color scheme, I wanna make the letters gold, but that's something that's easy enough to do later on down the line. Next thing we're going to do is use some of this Permatex gray gasket maker to install our oil pan and I used some yellow zinc fasteners just to give it a little bit of contrast even though nobody's ever going to see it but once again keeping with my black and gold colors. Now we can go ahead and install this high volume oil pump that I got from Godzilla Raceworks. Now this should help since my turbo is oil cooled and I'm also going to be getting an aftermarket oil cooler. So the next two things to install are going to be my thermostat and distributor. So for my distributor, it actually has a new bearing pressed into it and then also a drop-in trigger wheel that came in the kit with my Mega Squirt. And essentially that's just so that I can set my timing more accurately once I start tuning in the Mega Squirt software. So now we're going to be focused on the intake manifold and we're going to start off just by installing a couple of block off plates for the stock emissions control. Uh, after that we're going to be installing my fuel rail with some Bosch 1000cc injectors. Now admittedly that's a little bit overkill for what I need but it's typically better to have a little bit of headroom on your injector size. And finally we're going to be installing this 240SX throttle body which is an upgrade from the stock 50mm throttle body to a 60mm. Now we're going to be moving on to the exhaust manifold, and a lot of this work has already been done, but essentially I cleaned the manifold and then wrapped it with a titanium exhaust wrap. After that I had to do some machining to adapt from a T3 to a T4 turbo, and also welded in an outlet tube to mount my tile 38mm wastegate and then I installed my Borg Warner SXE 257 turbo. And then finally, I had one of the guys in our shop fab up a dump tube that also reroutes the wastegate into the exhaust with a bellows coupling. Alright guys, so at this point the engine build is essentially complete. Uh, now unfortunately I didn't remember to do like a full walk around after I had finished, but instead of that I'm just going to give you guys a little sneak peek into what's coming next. In the next video we're going to be doing all of our final assembly, and that includes installing the engine, all of the accessories in the engine bay, and a first start. So stay tuned for that, and if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.